So have you ever heard the word fascia and haven't been sure exactly what that means? What is fascia? What does it look like? What's it made of? Where is it in the body? What are its different forms? Well, in this video, we are going to break down what fascia is. We're gonna look at the official definitions of fascia and the fascial system and try to gain a little bit more clarity on this most remarkable and varied structure in our body. So first, let's start by saying there is a little bit of confusion about fascia. So fascia is uh, a relatively new player on the anatomical scene. See, what happened is that for years, anatomists, people who are doing human dissection, would cut through this kind of connective tissue stuff to get to the good stuff. So muscles, organs, other kinds of structures like that. So for a long time, this connective tissue was sort of disregarded and not paid much attention to. Um, but fairly recently, I'd say in the last 20 years or so, a recognition of the importance of this connective tissue has really come into the mainstream um, and now is an essential part of how we do body work and understand our own health and fitness. But definitions for what constitutes a fascia have been under debate. So at, for example, at like the fascia Congress and these different groups that get together to try to define it are still, it's a work in progress. So if you've been confused, you're not alone. And that makes total sense because there has been a little bit of, there are divided opinions still in terms of hashing out exactly what we define a fascia as. So I'd like to start by sharing some definitions with you. And this is from the Journal of Body Work and Movement Therapies from 2017. And this comes from a collaboration of some well-known fascia researchers and people who work in the dissection field who came together to try to bring cohesion to the definition of what a fascia is, right? So, but I will stress that there are still debates out there. People still, you know, uh, have differences in opinions, which is kind of fun. All right. So this group um, defines a fascia specifically as a sheath, a sheet, or any other dissectable aggregations of connective tissue that forms beneath the skin to attach enclose and separate muscles and other internal organs. So let's back up for a moment. What's connective tissue? So connective tissue is one of the four main categories of tissue that we have in the body. We have connective tissue, we have epithelial tissue, which is like lines and covers things. We have muscle, which you guys know, um, contracts, is very useful that way, and nervous tissue. So those are the only four big, huge types of tissue that we have in the body, connective tissue, epithelial, muscle, and nervous. And connective tissue is basically, you know, composed of everything, honestly, from your bones, which you might be surprised by that, but yes, bones to blood. And what characterizes everything from bones to blood and these things in between is the presence of fiber, like collagen, which helps to bind things and connect things and create structure and stability. So that's the big, category of connective tissue. And so a fascia specifically is a sheath, a sheet, or any other dissectable aggregations of connective tissue that forms beneath the skin, so not your skin, but beneath the skin to attach, enclose, and separate muscles and other internal organs. Whoo, sexy. Okay. So now I just want to give you a more broad definition because this group also defines something that they call the fascial system, which is like, okay, this is the big family here. We have a fascia and then we have the fascial system. If you were hearing those little clippity cloppity sounds, that was my dog needing to get through to the other door, back to fascia. So the fascial system is a larger group um, of tissues, part of the connective tissue family. So let me just read this to you. Now, I will warn you, it is a mouthful, but I think it's useful to understand. The fascial system consists of, here we go, the three-dimensional continuum of soft, collagen-containing, 
loose and dense fibrous connective tissues that permeate the body. So a fascia has to be dissected into sheets, but the fascial system contains, is the continuum of all of this collagenous stuff that holds us together. Okay, so the fascial system incorporates elements such as adipose tissue, that's fat, adventiae and neurovascular sheaths, so things that surround like your nerves and your blood vessels, um, aponeuroses, those are like sheets, deep and superficial fascia, epineurium, joint capsules, ligaments, membranes, meninges, myofascial expansions, periostea, retinacula, septa, tendons, visceral fascia, and all the intramuscular and intramuscular connective tissue, including endoperiepimesium. Okay, a lot of words to describe similar kinds of tissues that form different functions in the body, maybe different shapes and things like that, but they're all soft and have collagen in them, and basically wrap things and hold us together. The fascial system interpenetrates and surrounds all organs, muscles, bones, and nerve fibers, endowing the body with a functional structure and providing an environment that enables all body systems to operate in an integrated manner. And we used to not pay any attention to this stuff. Amazing! Okay, so that was a lot of words to describe, you know, this particular kind of textural substance in our body. So now let's take a look at what that really means. So let's talk about what all of those words mean practically. So just to be clear, full disclosure, my understanding of fascia comes from Gil Headley, who was one of the contributors to that article and to those definitions. Um, and Gill has a way of talking about fascia as a biological fabric. So, you know, whatever words we want to use, which get complicated, you know, those words kind of just describe where these things are found in the body, what they're wrapping, what they're doing. But if we take away those words, we can think of fascia as a biological fabric made of collagen, right, in different proportions that based on its weave, because it's a fabric and how it's put together, can support the body in different ways and have different functions, both for movement and for support. So let's take a look at some of the big picture fascia pieces in the body. Because what I think is most important to understand here is that when we hear the word fascia, we usually think of just one thing. We think of, you know, our IT band or something like that. But there are different kinds of fascia in the body with different qualities and textures and movement potentials based on how they're put together. So I just want us to have an understanding um, of the different, the big kind of different fabrics that there might be in our body helping us out. So in Gil Headley fashion, we'll start from the outside in. So the first layer of fascia that we encounter, Gil would actually say is our superficial fascia. That's what he calls it. Now, this goes by other words. Some people call it the hypodermis. Um, some people include it in the skin. Some people might call it the subcutaneous fat. Basically, it's the fatty layer that lies beneath the first two layers of our skin. So if you, you know, take your arm and kind of rub your forearm a little bit, there's going to be something, not too thick, but there's going to be like a little thick fluffy layer that lies beneath our skin. And this is typical of all humans. No matter how skinny you are or whatever, you have a layer of fat underneath you and that's good, we need that. And then it varies. Some places it's thinner, like the forearm or the shin. And then some places like, you know, the thigh, we get a nice thick juicy layer of this subcutaneous fat or superficial fascia. And the reason that Gill considers this a fascia is because it is a, a collagenous matrix. A matrix. It is um, like a, a beautiful chain mail of connective tissue that just happens to be infiltrated and filled and supported by adipose, so fat cells, right? So it's rich in this adipose, it's rich in fat cells, but it's also a connective tissue and it's very, very strong um, and very important to our stability. And it's what lets us, you know, hold, <laughs> hold a baby on our hip and not have our hips slide off, right? So this is a very strong layer. 
so that would be the first layer of fascia in our body and that has a particular quality and texture uh, right it's kind of fluffy and soft and yummy um, the next layer of fascia in our body is some is a layer that has been not really understood because it's very filmy and membranous it's kind of like a multi-directional felted fabric right that is very hydrated very liquid and gill calls this perifascia now perifascia is awesome and this is what permits differential movement in our body because we have all of these kind of higgledy piggledy super hydrated fibers what gill in the past construed as the fuzz and what these fibers do is they connect different layers of the tissue together and they permit differential movement up to a point between those layers and this stuff is really cool very hydrated slippery membranous multi-directional like a maybe like a cobweb um, that you could look at and pull in different directions but it has an end point so this is the magical kind of fascia in our body that permits us to move it permits everything to slide relative to each other this is why we can move basically but because it's so filmy and kind of diaphanous people haven't paid attention to it very much because when it's wet it looks invisible so it's been bypassed and only recently have we started to take note of it the next layer down in our fascia adventure here is the one that we probably recognize Gil calls it the poster child of fascia and this is the deep fascia and so this fascia is characterized by a dense regular weave so as a biological fabric it's quite sturdy right you know and this is what our IT band is a part of but the, it's not just the IT band there's a whole layer of this dense regular woven fascia that helps to provide stability it encircles the muscular layer textural layer of our body and it also creates septa so from the surface it dives down to the bone to create these compartments in which our muscles can then move and slide so this dense regular weave of fascia um, the IT band is a part of that and the IT band we note just because in that part of our body the outside of the leg that dense regular weave tends to be very regular and very dense in other parts of our body say across the you know abdominal space that we may not be quite as thick and dense and regular but it's still there so we have this all over our body to you know basically help contain the muscle textural layer and to help that move relative to the bones and what's cool to understand is that this dense regular fiber is actually embedded in perifascia above and below so that slippery differential movement right can happen both above the muscle textural layer as well as beneath it so any place that we have differential movement in the body um, at least in our musculoskeletal system you're going to find perifascia other places that we're going to find fascia if you remember from our definition of a fascia a fascia is a sheath a sheet or any other dissectable aggregations of connective tissue that forms beneath the skin to attach enclose and separate muscles and other internal organs so let's take a moment to break that down a little bit so our muscle layer which is beneath the deep fascia is so cool and it is utterly dependent on fascia connective tissue in order to work because muscle tissue on its own is actually very delicate what gives our muscles their ability to exert force is the fascia so just a little quick reminder about how muscles are structured we have a muscle cell or a fiber wrapped in fascia and then we clump a bunch of those together wrap them in fascia and then put a bunch of those together wrap them in fascia and then we have a bicep so our bicep is actually these wrapped layers all the way down to the fiber of the muscle cells um, and that's what allows gives it structure and support 
and all of those layers of connective tissue that are enveloping all of those muscle fibers, well, if we come to the end of the muscle and the muscle cells, the more delicate muscle cells peter out, but the connective tissue that has been enveloping and keeps going, well, hey, we have a tendon. And that's what makes the muscle continuous into the bone. Oh my gosh, who knew? So just in case you were thinking that a tendon is connective tissue that's just stuck onto the end of a muscle, no, no, my friends, that connective tissue is part of the muscle structure and is what um, comes out of all of that wrapping, right? So if you imagine all of these wrappings of saran wrap that you've stuffed with, I don't know, jello, and then the jello runs out and then you have all that saran wrap, hey, that saran wrap is your tendon. So cool. We also referenced internal organs. So we have these bags within our abdominal cavity, which help to, you know, create these visceral spaces inside which our organs move. So that's also fascia. Let's just take a moment and see if we can feel a little bit into some of these layers of our body. So superficial fascia, that's the layer right beneath our skin, which is this beautiful kind of fatty chain mill layer, right? So if you give yourself a little bounce here on your forearm, you can feel a little bit of that fluffy or somewhere else, maybe for me in the top of my thigh, I've got a lot of fluffy here, I can feel, right? And you can feel that you can move that in most places, not all places, but that moves relative to the layer beneath it. Well, the reason that movement happens is because of what Gill calls perifascia, right? So that's that super hydrated, membranous layer of connective tissue, um, which permits the differential movement, permits one thing to go one way and the other thing to go the other way, but they're still connected, right? Permits differential movement here in your body. And then beneath that, what's that sliding over? Hey. That's that biological fabric that is regularly woven called our deep fascia. And you might find that particularly like on the outside of your thigh here, if we give this a little strum, you can feel that band, which is called our iliotibial band here, which is a big strapping, very densely woven part of this particular layer. And the dense fascia, this dense regular fascia, which we call deep fascia, in places dives down to the bone to create compartments for the muscles. And the muscles are surrounded in fascia at the tiniest layer and then in greater, greater bundles that helps hold those muscles together. So there you go, everybody. There is a little bit of a primer on fascia. And we looked at how fascia um, means different things, right? Fascia is a, is a word that actually denotes a bunch of different types of biological fabrics in our body. But all of them are characterized by the presence of collagen and that they are, you know, have different weavings in them to provide different layers of support or movement in different parts of our body. So I hope that has helped to create, to broaden the scope of what a fascia is. For more information on this, you should totally check out Gil Headley. Um, he's been studying this stuff for years um, and it's wonderful to go down the rabbit hole of fascia. Now that we can appreciate how it infiltrates and is a three-dimensional continuum in our body that makes all of this movement um, possible. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you found that interesting, please subscribe for more tips. And um, if you have questions, comments, put them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you so we can continue this conversation. <laughs>